What's up in the air in your business or your life? Are you juggling many balls? I only have two because I can't see very well to juggle them, so I just hang on to two. Our idiom, our expression today actually originated as put as in the air, which is weird to me, but in the 1700s, that was the expression to, for uncertainty, something that wasn't settled. And it wasn't until the uh, first half of the 1900s that the word up was substituted for put as in, or I guess put as was replaced by up in the air. Now, up in the air, of course, means uncertainty, not sure what's going to happen, usually because something else has to happen first or some decisions need to be made before we can figure out what's going to happen next. COVID-19, almost everyone I know and have talked to over the last year plus now has had their their business and their lives for sure impacted in some ways. Some ways great for business, some ways great for family life, some ways great for relationships, other ways not so much. Uh, as a response to the pandemic, I started to do a get up and go challenge, a 30 day challenge that teaches people and I get to refresh the process in my mind and go over it every few months to look at where they are right now with respect to any area or aspect of your life and the results you're getting. And I like to teach people that there are seven main areas and aspects of our life that we want to at least have a little consideration about our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, which is, and then relationships contribution. And then I added this year for the people I work with communication and confidence, because it seems like those were areas that needed a little beefing up for a lot of us. And they positively impact all of the other areas and aspects of our life and, and our businesses. If we improve our communication skills, it positively impacts our business. If we improve our confidence, it positively impacts our business. We'll go after clients and make sales and build relationships and all of the areas and aspects of our life are positively impacted by these things. It's just like if our physical health is tanking and we're having challenges, if we're sick because we get COVID, if we're sick because people in our organization that normally help us build our business get COVID or any other ailment, we have to make changes and adjustments. We have to figure out how are we going to continue to get the results that we want for our customers. And during this time with all of our lives changing, guess what? All of our customers' lives have been impacted and changing as well. Are we being proactive and are we saying, okay, well, this is the problem I used to solve for my customer. What is their most important problem now and how can I help them solve that with my products and services? And then we're looking for the people that our solution can actually benefit and solve. Same thing in our lives. So what area and aspect of your life or business are up in the air? Maybe it's uh, your results in a particular area. What I like to do is look at, well, what are the results I'm getting in, in an area of my business? And I actually do an audit and I look at all the different areas and aspects of my business on an annual basis, at least. Sometimes more often, depending on why my key performance indicators are, what I'm looking at to find out if it's going the direction I want it to go or not. But I look at and say, what are my results right now? And then at the beginning of each year, I have a plan for my targets. What do I want my results to be in the area of my physical well-being, my financial well-being, you know, the physical condition of, of not just my business, but of me as well, but with respect to my business. What do I want the emotional, the, the relationships to be like with respect to my business? And I have goals set for those, and I break them down and back them up to put systems and processes and procedures in place that will make sure, and habits, I like habits because I don't even have to think about them, I just do these things automatically as part of my life, and I know that by doing them, they're moving me in the direction of what it is that I want. Here's an example. If I want to improve my physical health, I take my overall annual goal for that, and I break it down. We can do the same thing with the financial goal for our organization. This is the number of you know, net sales or gross sales I want to have or the dollar amount I want to make and bring in in my business, knowing what my other expenses and things are. And I'm going to break that down and figure out, well, how many sales do I need to make every day? How many calls do I need to make? How many people do I need to contact? How many, you know, and, and the sales team does all that, but we want to have our big goal so that we're all in each of the different departments and if with each of the different people we work with, we want to make sure we're all on the same page, all working toward the same big end goal. Uh, I worked in corporate America a long time and uh, theoretically everyone in the organization had the same goal and objective, yet in each of the different divisions and departments there were like these silos or towers of uh, management and, and relationships and, and leadership and each little, I called them 
fiefdoms or fiefdoms was trying to get the most that they could out of the overall budget because that was just a strategy. It works a lot like the government does, uh, but it, it wasn't particularly effective in the bigger organizations. So where am I now? Where do I want to be? What can I do with respect to my processes and systems to get there by breaking it down into little pieces, by automating things, by delegating things, by creating systems that will guarantee that the results moving toward what it is that we want are always in the works without us even having to think about it. So what's up in the air for you? There's lots of different ways to say up in the air. I actually looked up the composition of air because I realized that I probably learned it in chemistry a long, long time ago, but I didn't realize what it was. And I thought that was interesting. You know, our atmosphere and air is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, water vapor in varying amounts, depending on where you're visiting or where you live. Uh, Florida, Houston, areas by the oceans tend to have a lot more water vapor in their air than we do here in the Midwest. Uh, and then 0.9% argon, which I found fascinating, and 0.04% carbon dioxide and trace gases because we're always, us and the animals are always breathing and uh, putting out carbon dioxide. So there's obviously got to be some of that in the planet. I won't even get into the green business stuff and all that or the green, green theory and the Green New Deal because I don't know enough about it to even comment. So up in the air, are you up in the air? And if so, what are you doing about it? If you're struggling with that at all, hit me up and ask. We'll just talk about, hey, what's your next step? We don't have to do anything but just talk about that so you never feel like you're stuck or you don't know who to ask or what to do next. Because we actually always know, even if we don't want to admit it to ourselves, we always know what is the next thing we need to do in any area or aspect of our life. I think relationships, health, um, careers, jobs, industries, businesses, have all really been blown up by the COVID pandemic. But if we look for the opportunities and the upside and the change that works for us as a result of this and focus on the solutions, we're always gonna be better off than if we just use that as our excuse or blame the, the pandemic for our business shutting down or whatever. All right, that's it. Have an awesome day. I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your life and business right now? Take care.